I don't want to fight age and I don't want to look 20 years younger because it's not possible. And I don't want to be wearing those clothes that I can't wear. I mean, there is a grace in being your age and there is a, a pleasure in acceptance. But with acting, I felt like it was a little beyond me. That it's something that I could never really wrap my head around because there are better actors than me. And, and I think you also need to understand the harsh reality of what it means because it's a game. But it's a game that can end any day. So if you understand that, you never really get into the game. You know, just a day job. And you treated it like a day job, sort of. So I guess it kind of kept you immune. But who looks at your gender when you're on a job? A job is a job is a job. Go do your job, right? Otherwise, go home. Someone said this to me. They said, just type in your name, see what comes up. I see marriage. I see sexy pictures. You know, it's an absurd Google searches. And I'm like, wow. I've never thought from a man's perspective. I think 40s is cruise mode. Because you actually begin to understand the truth about yourself, what will happen and what won't happen. Just calm down. So calm down. Just and, and you actually enjoy life more. I think I live better. I feel I live a better life than I did during my high celebrity years, you know, traveling, whatever. I live a more relaxed life. I eat what I want. I don't even care whether I fit into a pant or I don't because it really is not important in the big scheme of things. I think it's almost like we we don't even talk about the age barrier. We have to be ageless. That's why you have Shah Rukh and Salman still romancing and dancing around like they're like 20 when they're 50. But this is a, you know, a disease of the culture. It doesn't make any sense to me. With women, it's worse. You have to look permanently frozen in time. How is that possible? I had once just gone along for a shoot. I was studying for some exam and uh, it was Atul Kazbekar. And uh, so this was uh, some catalog shoot. There was Meghna, there was Malaika. And he saw me standing in the corner and he said, listen, uh, just pose. I said, are you kidding? I'm like, no. He said, come on, now don't be such a spoil spot, just pose. So he made me wear a salwar and stand. I, I, and he said, can't do anything with your body. It's like, you look like a lump, like a potato. I said, I don't even know what I'm supposed to do with my hands. He said, don't worry. Can you smile? I said, yeah. He just took every shot was a smiling shot. So that was my first catalog, some Burlington's catalog. And it was kind of crazy because there was no plan. Meghna was interested. She was the only one who was keen. Um, I was a reluctant model. Then onto a reluctant video jockey, which was even funnier. It was Farooq Chotia who took me aside one day and said, listen, he says, as your friend, I'm telling you today, he's like, make up your mind in your own head. Don't be such a snob. The business is, is with you. He says, why don't you just embrace it? Because it will embrace you right back. I took his words to heart and I didn't look back. You know, so it was really interesting because I had a really good stint, fashion, uh, ramp, ads. And it was you know, this really strange journey of how these things kind of fell together. So it took me a long time to acknowledge to self that I could actually be in this business and that it was something tangible and real. But once you're in it, it's like any other profession. You have to get it right. You have to do what you, what you need to do. You have to work on it. And uh, so then when acting fell into my lap, I'm like, okay, I will do this as well. So everything, you know, training, dancing, you know, diction, dialogue, acting. Uh, I did two films. But then by then I felt like, I felt that I don't have the aptitude for this. At some point after overcoming my, my confusion or my lack of conviction about me as a modeler, like me as the a video jockey, I think I managed to crack it. But with acting, I felt like it was a little beyond me. That it's something that I could never really wrap my head around because there are better actors than me. And, and I think you also need to understand the harsh reality of what it means because it's a game. But it's a game that can end any day. So if you understand that, you never really get into the game. you never brought your stuff home. Because in your four walls, my parents ran their own pharma company, so it was a very different environment. So all our heirs, so-called heirs, were left at the doorstep. Now you came home to a very normal life, which I think makes a huge difference, because it was just regular stuff. You know, just a day job. And you treated it like a day job, sort of. So I guess it kind of kept you immune. Till you kind of leave the business, and then it's like I'd walk into, you know, just, just entering regular day-to-day -day stuff and, and, and whisper, whisper. You know, people point, 
people will say something so you can actually hear them talking about you and I'm like wow I said they actually think I'm interesting enough to talk about it so this this is fascinating to actually never get around to handling male attention I was in a bubble at any given point of time I had no idea what was happening outside my bubble in a way I'm thankful because if I understood maybe I would not have been able to manage because it's a lot uh, the attention is there it, a, a lot of it is unwanted you know uh, people dress for attention F forget about our line of work people dress for attention people dress to look good and people crave attention you know you literally fight the attention because it's not the kind of attention that you want a lot of people told me later you know uh, around that time you know I was trying to say something to you I found you attractive I was like I'm so glad that I was living in La La Land because I didn't know I was also ready to get into, you know, wanting to, to like take the first step into production. And it was almost comical because I realized overnight, my gosh, my wardrobe needs to change. So all the tight pants went out, all the tight fitting shirts went out and all the loosest clothes you can possibly find. Who wants that kind of attention from their like production teams? Are you kidding? I mean, then they're, they're not looking at you, they're, they're kind of seeing you in a totally different way. So it also came out of wanting to get uh, people to stop seeing you as a in front of camera object. I think we don't have enough female producers in this country. So when you say, hey, I, you know, I mean, I'm a female producer, it just, it takes people a long time to understand that you have to be hard as tech. One of my production heads was from, was from, you know, again, I don't want to take the name of the state, but he was from a middle India state. He actually told my co-producer that I can't talk to him. Because I was talking to him genderless because I'm running the setup, but he didn't want me to have a conversation with him. Not because I didn't know how to talk to him, because he couldn't accept taking orders from a, from a woman. We still fight those kind of things. And then there's a subtle game that goes on at other levels. You know, it's there. The pandering, the don't like women talking to you like in a certain way. But who looks at your gender when you're on a job? A job is a job is a job. Go do your job, right? Otherwise, go home. But I think we're a long way off from that ethic, which is why you still have glass ceilings for like women. Starts in their head, starts at work. So we're a long way off. I mean, I think we're better off for sure, but we are still miles to go. I mean, and this is me talking for urban India. Finally, both my sisters opted to marry people from outside the business. Uh, Meghna, of course, because she lived abroad for so long, married a Greek uh, citizen. She lives abroad. She's lived abroad for the longest chunk. Um, you know, so they're so far removed from your life here. Samira, you know, it was really tough, but she was very clear in her head. She told me years ago, she's like, I would never marry anyone from the business. Fair enough. How do you find someone outside the business who can see you for you? It's very tough to extricate the whole thing around you. You know, the like, you know, hullabaloo, the press, the, the you know, the, the, the shenanigans. Then also having them believe what you say. Because every second day you open up the papers, there's some new dirt on you. Like, like someone said this to me, they said, just type in your name, see what comes up. I see marriage, I see sexy pictures, you know, it's an absurd Google searches and I'm like, wow. I've never thought from a man's perspective, but what must happen to him when he types that in? Because he can't even verify what he's seeing or saying. You're caught between the devil and the deep sea. If you go out from people from the business, well, to my mind, there's like no break from work. You take your work home, fair enough. Let's face it, I mean, by virtue of being so-called celebrity, you've been exposed to a completely different lifestyle. Like you kind of go, go and live a certain life, you live in a certain way, you have a certain set of friends. How do you go out there and technically get together with ordinary Joe? Who could be anyone. I mean, like, you know, I mean, the, the guy could be king of his castle, like in his own domain, but he's not a media guy. So how is he going to even, I mean, how are your worlds going to ever overlap? How do your paths cross? I think men in our line of work are more understanding because they, they live the life. They understand the crap that goes with it. Which, which is also why a lot of girls from the business end up with men uh, in the business. Where are your, uh, your you know, after hours to go meet real people? I've forgotten even day-to-day -day life, I resent putting one you know, iota of powder because it's years of being just tired. I'm tired of having cake on my face. I'm tired of having stuff in my hair. I, and I'm tired of dressing up. So, you know, coming back to my old joke, pay me. I'll be like, you know, and they're like, how offensive. How can you say things like, I'm like, pay me. I said, make it worth my while, I'll think about it. <laughs>